unstructured data, this prolif proliferation is creating a huge catalyst for opportunity. This catalyst and the resulting data dividend that we call it has the potential truly to grow the economy, to attract new jobs, uh, to solve diseases, uh, reduce trans traffic and transportation problems, and do a bunch of very interesting new things and allow us to ask new questions of data that we may not have been able to ask before. Uh, and this is really exciting. In fact, a study that we have recently commissioned shows that governments worldwide can unlock several billion dollars of value over the next few years by combining data, combining information from different sources in order to derive insights uh, based on predictions and uh, based on new questions as we talked about. And we'll talk about what some of that actually means. Now, in terms of some of the examples that we've had, uh, the city of Barcelona is one. Uh, Barcelona has the, their largest festival is called La Mercer. Uh, social sentiment plays a very big role in terms of drawing revenue from tourists, but also of helping governments understand uh, what citizens are saying, helping businesses understand what their consumers are saying about their products. And what we did was partnered with that city to analyze social media feeds, to analyze uh, credit card transactions, we looked at GPS data, we looked at weather and traffic patterns, and we put together a cohesive uh, dashboard that allowed the city to understand citizens' happiness attending the, the festival, uh, how grumpy they were, for example, with the parking situation, um, and use that data to really improve the overall experience. The city of New York is another one, partnering with the mayor and that city. Uh, terrorism is a big threat, and we worked with the city to create what's called the Domain Awareness System, DAS. What the system does is it allows the collection of data from different sources to, and using predictive analytics to then help law enforcement officials identify and track suspicious vehicles, suspicious people, suspicious packages. So for example, if I see a suspicious package lying on the ground, you could have law enforcement personnel that look at all the the, the sensors, look at camera information to find out where the package might have originated from and really do a, almost a playback in time. That's another example. Um, there's, oops, it's moving. Right, my clicker is um, gone into the clouds right now, but when it does. Another example here uh, was, here we go. This, the, uh, this was in, there you go, the city of London. So one of, it's all very well to have a lot of sensors, but then what do you do with the sensors that takes it to the next level? In this example, we work with the city to identify and predict in advance before a component was to fail, uh, identify where and when something was about to happen. Uh, if for, for those of you who visited London, you know that the underground, just like here in Singapore, is a big deal. And if, if the, the, the elevator stop working, then you have a problem because people cannot move up, cannot move down. So it was really important for them to detect some anomalies in, in the data and then see, for instance, I have, let's say, a ramp that is maybe starting to vibrate a little too much. That could be an indication that a, a certain elevator is about to fail. And working with the city, we were able to quickly identify, you know, connect all those sensors back into the main systems, and then via a dashboard, allow for the city management of officials to more accurately and proactively uh, solve these problems. Now, instead of me just standing here and talking, I think it's important to just show you a few things in, in real time. So, assuming that my clicker actually works, yeah, sure. Let me just set quick context. Uh, we worked with uh, one of the cities in the US uh, and their hospitals in order to identify patient health records. Now, it's very important if you're a Ministry of Health or if you're a hospital to make sure that your patients are treated for the right disease, but that they don't come back 
because of some problems from a misdiagnosis perspective. It's also important to identify the root causes that, that lead to, let's say, people being obese or high, having heart, heart disease or having cancer. And this is where the public-private partnership also comes in, where, or where ministries collaborate with each other in order to derive you know, census information combined with the information about patient health. So in this example, Oops, all right, uh, we seem to play the video and I'm going to ask the people in the back to maybe roll the video again. So while the video is loading, the key point here I want to just bring up is that data comes to life when you combine it, combine different sources in order to derive an insight wherein the sum is greater than the individual parts. What you will see shortly is a manifestation inside of Excel. Uh, it's a map, actually is Excel. And Excel we use here as a canvas that pulls data from a variety of sources in the cloud. Uh, this, this data was combined, aggregated. We did a lot of big data analysis on it. We did a lot of predictive analy analytics and mining on top of that. Um, all right, so it's still complaining about something. So I'm going to, sorry, sorry about that. Just going to wait because uh, that is an important point. Here we go. Okay. Can we roll the video just by itself, please? Here we go. So what you see here is data that combines what we've done is we've combined data. So just, just pause that video, please. I'm wearing the hat of a policy planner. This is Excel, by the way. I'm a policy planner, and I'm trying to identify, you'll notice, I'm trying to identify what's going on with a certain neighborhood. We notice that this neighborhood has a very high incidence of diabetes, of obesity, of heart disease. And we're trying to figure out what's going on. So now this policy planner is wearing the hat of a data scientist. And the hypothesis here is that perhaps the, the lack of access uh, to high income choices, so basically low income is causing diabetes and, and heart disease and so on. This is just a hypothesis at this point. But you see how she's wearing, a, wearing the hat now of a data scientist using the information at her fingertips. She notices that there is one neighborhood here called the Crossroads neighborhood that has all of this combined together. Uh, high heart disease, high diabetes, high cholesterol, everything. It's also low income. We got this data by looking at the, the census information. We also combine it with the hospital's own medical health registry information about each patient. And then we display that inside of, believe it or not, this is Excel. Um, we, the hypothesis now is that maybe the low income, because they don't have a car, and this, by the way, is five miles in the US. Five miles, walking five miles when it's heavy snow is pretty much out of the question. So what we think is perhaps, let's see, can we combine it and see if there is something causing this problem? Let's say maybe a lack of access to fresh food outlets. So when we did the analysis, the fresh food outlets were about five miles away. Now that is not something, you're not gonna walk with two bags of groceries five miles in heavy snow, obviously not. What was around in this neighborhood? There was a fast food outlet. Now this is, not, uh, this is not to say that fast food is negative. Everything is about balance. But the point here is, as a, as a government, you have the option now to introduce more choice, more healthy options as well uh, for your constituents. Um, so that is what the policy maker would do. So we roll the video again, please. You would also notice you combine data about the parks available, all the gyms in the neighborhood. And you see again, there are no gyms around here. All the gyms are very far away. And the same thing as well from a parks and recreation perspective. Again, all the parks very far away. So that leads to the conclusion for it potentially um, that 
there is something that needs to be done in terms of policy to implement more healthy choices, just give people more options. I'm going to do one more quick video. So this was in, in the healthcare range. Another video is going to be, just as I said, context while it's, while it's rolling. Uh, the city of New York. So how many of you remember the Hurricane Sandy that hit exactly two years ago? So almost exactly to the date, two years ago, was the, probably one of the biggest hurricanes in, in that city. And what we did was said, okay, what if we could rewind the clock and look at all the available information that existed at that time in order to help people who couldn't help themselves. Now, during a calamity, it's the elderly who are the ones who are unable to help themselves, the elderly or the very young. So what we did was we looked at census data. You got all the elderly people. We combined it with NOAA, National Oceanic Administration Agency's predictions about where the high rainfall was going to hit. And as a situation commander in a war room, you could then look at where you want to deploy your resources. This was the actual path of the hurricane. It went straight into the city of New York. So as someone with limited resources, right, no, no one has infinite resources, you need to make very intelligent choices about where you deploy your, your resources. This could be a government, this could be a, a, a private company, it doesn't matter. We are all faced with the same problem. So, in a situation environment, in a war room environment, these are the things that when you combine together, you add some predictive capabilities that exist in the cloud, you add the data that combines uh, from internet of things, you know, sensor data, you add census data, all of this together comes in to create a story. It's a story. In the old world, we had data that was black and white. Black and white. In the new world, we have data, to use the word that was used yesterday, data that lives close to the applications, data that is visual, data that tells a story, data that comes to life because you have it combined with other sources wherein the sum is greater than the individual parts. So these are really just two examples I wanted to leave you with. There are many other examples where governments are asking and private enterprises asking new questions of data, whether it's in transportation, we talk about social media, whether it's uh, national intelligence and defense, uh, whether it's in education and students and learning analytics, the possibilities are truly endless. So I don't think we're in a situation now where the technology limits us. Really, it's about asking and challenging ourselves to ask the right questions. So that's my, my quick segment, and I'll welcome Eric back. Thank you, Sanjay. I think we are out of time.